Hi there. Today I'm going to go through an app that I recorded uh, called Montage Magic. I found this app, which is universal, very interesting because you can put your own fonts uh, in it from the various free font sites. And it's another way to sort of do graphical layout, although it can also be used to make a montage of lots of photos. I'll go ahead and give you get the walkthrough started. Uh, when you first open the app, you're presented with a little tutorial, and then you can choose to create a new one. So in this case, I'll just go with a basic postcard white and or springtime, and there's a lot of other options. This particular uh, motif has the board in the back, and you can see I just created a brand new one. So I can go to import some photos in here. Uh, in this case, I'll just pick a few. I'll go through my uh, lots of photos here and pick a few out. Don't look too closely at these. <laughs> They're not all related to springtime. And I've got thousands of photos kicking around. And that's probably enough. Throw one more in for fun. And based on your settings, uh, it imports them in different layouts. In this case, it went with a grid uh, layout. You can also have them randomly come in at different angles uh, effect. And now I'll basically use a single finger and double fingers to uh, drag things and rotate and scale uh, all the photos. If you tap, you can get the toolbars. Um, here I'm just sort of deciding what I'd like to see. Uh, if you choose the edit button, you can easily go and delete objects or edit text. In this case, there were a few things I wanted to delete. Uh, I just wanted to go with three pictures at the end. And I noticed in this motif it's locking at various angles. In other uh, settings you can change it so that it does not lock to the little angles so you can have more free rotation. I'll now add some text to the image. Uh, springtime. Of course, uh, it felt good yesterday, but today it's 92 degrees, so it's not quite as spring-like. Um, one of the things, it comes with a number of fonts. You can set the color. It comes with a few standard fonts. But I've already downloaded a few other fonts, and so I'll use my fonts in this particular case. I downloaded three. And it'd be nice to get a preview there, but at least you should know what your fonts look like if you import them. So I pull that out, and now I can scale it. And I'll play with that a bit. The other thing you can add in this uh, to the screen, you, besides pulling in photos and putting text on the screen, you can also put in your contacts names or email addresses or phone numbers, I'm not entirely sure which, information from your contacts. Uh, when you're importing photos, you can have it entirely full of the screen or you can choose a select number. So there's quite a few options there. Uh, you may have noticed when you double click on an image or an object on the screen, it um, will go all the way to the back or come all the way to the front. Those are always your options for your layering. You can also add a bunch of uh, curved lines and arrows. Uh, and so I add one of those, scale that up a bit. Stuck with the red motif. Trust me, this is uh, no artistic talents at all kicking around in here. At this point, I don't think I like the wood background, so I think I'm going to change that in the settings. And that's with the backgrounds. You have a lot of options here. Clouds looks interesting. That feels more spring-like to me. There's quite a few other options in here. Uh, you can change the borders on the photos. Uh, border colors, things along those lines. A lot of options in this program.
the export size, this was on the iPhone, but on the iPad you can go up to four times the resolution of the iPad, the Retina iPad, and so you get exceedingly high uh, export resolution out of this app, which is really uh, nifty for doing artistic artwork. And I briefly scanned through the help um, here just to show you that there's a lot of built-in help, what all the various keys do. And here's when you can import photos. You can get a, quite a variety of different ways to import them. Once you've imported them, you can range them any way you want. So now with my green outlines and my clouds, it looks much more interesting um, on the screen. And now I could save that, email it, or uh, print it from printing, uh, if you have a printer attached to your computer or an air printer. And this is where you can do this lucky dip where you can randomly pull in some photos um, anywhere from five up to auto where it fills the whole screen. You can also get uh, some contact type of information imported. Here I just grabbed a number of images. Not that I wanted any of these, but I thought they'd look good. One thing you see here is a little alert popped up indicating memory is low. Um, I hadn't restarted my iPhone in a long time, and I was it was interesting that it gave me the warning. Uh, not many other apps do that. And so you can see it was last updated, and it's in there. At a later time, I can come back to edit this or end up uh, deleting it. If I choose to edit, I can delete any of these whenever I want. So overall, um, really nice app. It's vastly better on the iPad, of course, just because of the screen real estate. On the iPad, I noticed it really did get pretty sluggish um, when you were dealing with high-resolution thing, uh, particularly custom, um, fonts you've downloaded um, and installed on the in the app. There, it would often take maybe 20 seconds when the font was scaled across the entire screen. It would slowly come in in blocks as it was fading in. But um, on the iPhone and the iPad, uh, in neither case did it ever crash. Uh, so that made me feel happy. Overall, I don't do a lot of the photo montage sort of stuff, but I was quite happy how this could be used sort of just to do posters or uh, most any other graphic design you were interested in, particularly with the ability to pull in any fonts off the free font website. So overall, I really liked it, and um, if you end up using it, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.